Welcome to Champ ADV YouTube channel. Today we're going to show you how to remove a chain, install a chain, and give you some of the details about uh, what chains we use and why. To start, um, we like to use DID chains, and the chains that we'll use is a 520VX3 or a 520ERVT or an ERV7. Um, those are the best, uh, so to say, X-ring chains. I don't really use non-X-ring chains because I ride a lot of off-road stuff. The non-X-ring 520 chains wear out really quick. They get a lot of sloppiness side to side. So um, for the details of those, I would say X-ring chain, DID, they're the uh, best performance on the market. Um, a lot of the uh, other aftermarket cheaper chains come much wider and you'll find that they'll grind a groove in your cases not so much in the austrian motorcycles but for sure in the honda motorcycles as the wider chain goes through the counter shaft area it'll grind a groove and um i haven't ever seen it actually like dig the aluminum out but um i've seen it kind of destroy stuff so stick to did stuff um i used to be sponsored i'm not sponsored anymore and I still use DID chains. To begin uh, step one, really, it's removal of your chain. Now this, this chain um, starts with an R. I'm not gonna say them because, uh, whatever, it's an RK chain. It comes stock on a 450L. It's good for maybe 2,000 miles, maybe. Um, as you can see, here's some symptoms of a, um, a worn chain. If you have stiff links like this, that means that the lube's basically gone in there. It's very hard to bring back a chain that has stiff links and it eventually rolls really um, terribly as you go down the road or as you're riding. So you wanna get this chain off. Um, it's unfortunate because Honda used to use um, regular uh, DID chain stock, but and it was like the best chain on the market. But anyways, to remove, we're just gonna use this Motion Pro um, removal tool. I only use this for removal. Uh, this is my way of just pushing the pin, I push it completely out. And instead of um, using a grinder or like some kind of a punch system, this this piece, um, it's a 14, I just connect the piece, touch it right to the chain. And then this is the push pin here, and it's gonna push and break the, the pin and push it all the way through. So as it puts pressure on it, eventually it's gonna just pop or you can, it just barely popped right there. We're just gonna spin this thing all the way out, both sides. And the link's gonna come out the other side. And now, sorry, not the link, the pin is gonna come out the other side of the link. And we'll back it out here, and this chain's gonna be broken. Now, if you don't have this tool, or you're trying to, I think that this is the fastest way you can use a grinder and grind off those tabs and then get that um, link off and push the pin out. But that makes a mess of sparks and this is the easiest and quickest way. You can see if it, it got bound just, just like that, I'm gonna pull it out. You can easily pull a chain out of the counter shaft rocket when it's not, it doesn't have stiff links. So another factor in where not only do these stiff links happen and you wanted to certainly replace it then, but as the chain spins around X amount of times, it starts to flatten the, your links and a more worn chain will get super flat. And if you have harder sliders like a swing arm chain slider or um, stuff that's made to last out, kind of outlast the chain, it's harder on your chain. So it'll actually wear the metal out on your chain before it wears the plastic out on your chain slider or your chain guide. So. One of the factors is the flatness of your chain and then also the side to side movement of your chain. If it, um, if it has a lot of side to side movement, that's another factor you want to replace. If you use aluminum sprockets and you're going to change your aluminum sprockets, I suggest you replace your chain. If you use steel sprockets, like for instance, this one, this is actually the one that comes stock on the 450L. It has like a neoprene cushion drive and it also comes that cushion drive on the 13 counter shaft. This sprocket will last forever. I've practically put 10,000 miles on my sprocket on my 450L and I can't get 
this sprocket to wear out. So um, you can run continuous chains on a steel sprocket if it's strong enough. So just pay attention to the way that the teeth are cupping out or if they're not never cupping out. And if they all uh, remain the same, then you can always use a, a new chain or replace the chain in time. So I've probably used maybe six chains on my 450L to the same rear sprocket. And if you're, asking, if you're wondering what gearing I use on my 450L, I run a 1451, but I have a camshaft and, and uh, a decent amount of horsepower mods like a pro circuit exhaust and coolant outlet and, and um, Vortex ECU. So, so this is a trash can item. So you get your brand new chain after you've got your chain off and you roll this thing on here. And what we're doing is we're figuring out the size that's required for your drive system. This, this is specifically 1351. We're gonna leave the chain exactly, or the chain adjusters, swing arm adjusters in the same exact spot as they were, because we might get really lucky. And in this case, we are getting very lucky. You can see that uh, maybe the, the sizing difference from the DID to the RK is quite a bit different. Um, here we are, we've got the meeting of the two chains. We're gonna, we're gonna push this pin out. Now, if you had different gearing, you might need to find um, where your chain's gonna sit. If you can see, this, this chain's um, got quite a bit of slack here. So if we ran, we tried to pull this chain tighter and run this link all the way to here, we'd have to run the adjusters quite a ways up into the uh, swing arm. And you wanna be careful about doing that because you're making the bike's wheelbase shorter by a solid uh, half an inch or uh, in the realm of like 50 millimeters and that could change the way the bike handles. Now, if you're trying to do all woods riding and you want a short wheelbase, then, then go for that. But if you're looking for stability, you want a longer wheelbase. So we're happy with where the chain adjuster is right now. We're gonna adjust it and we're gonna push this pin out with the same tool that we used to remove the chain. And it's a brand new chain, so it's um, instead of doing any grinding, Again, just gonna butt this thing up here. Take the 14 mil on the Motion Pro removal tool. Push that pin all the way out. The other thing to note, if you're in a huge pinch and you're willing to risk it, you can actually push this pin all the way out and then change it. If you didn't have like a link or something or you're in like a, um, a trail fix and you have the proper tools, you can actually push that pin back in and still ride the motorcycle to like a safer destination if you were to break a chain or something like that. So sometimes it's good to keep your extra links um, you can keep that inner link and then buy two master link clips. And that's a, that's a great uh, option to put in your fanny pack for Baja or trail riding is two master link clips and an inner link. So there's two different type of connecting links. You have a, a connecting rivet link and that's where you actually smash the pins, which is here. You can see that we're going to open those up and it's going to actually, um, it'll be a full continuous chain and then there's a, a connecting link with an actual clip link and I'm going to show you how to install both of these but we're going to end up using the the rivet link the rivet link is the strongest option and it's what I use all the time okay so we're using the uh, clip connecting link slide two x-ring seals if you look really closely what they're talking about is there's a slight X-ring shape. Instead of an O-ring, it's, it's an X-ring. So um, we'll slide this into the back of the chain here with a little bit of lube. Lubrication is um, important on the install to kind of just get, it's not like a massive thing to get it um, like super clean or whatever, just it's good to have a little bit in there. Um, 
Obviously your spray on lube is going to do the best job. So we've got your four seals that the connecting link comes with, two on each side, obviously. Now, what you're going to find is this link is very hard to push on. It's not going to just slide on. It's essentially pressed on. So you can use a, um, a press on tool like this. This is a Honda tool or a Motion Pro offers that. But if you have only just pliers and you're trying to use this connecting link you can take like say um, a nut that fits around the actual pin of the chain and then use your your um, pliers to slowly push on both sides and you can see I'm just doing a light squeeze and it's starting to slowly press on now, this action will actually get you pretty safe to a destination. It's not going to be, obviously, go race it, but it's, it's on there pretty well. Now, so that's pressed on. We have enough gap here. We might want to do a little bit more to slide that connecting clip on. So then we have a clip. And we have, this is obviously gonna slide into the grooves that's on the rivet or on the connecting link. And obviously the direction of the chain is moving that way. So we want the round side moving that way. If you use it this way, whatever you use could potentially, or I'm um, sorry, as the chain direction is going this way, it could hit on say the chain. Um, if you were to take a, a rock hit to your chain guide or anything that's in the way of this it could just literally pop this thing right off I've seen it happen many times on this style um, connecting link and it's one of the reasons i don't use it for say stuff like baja now a lot of people put this on and they're like how do i put this on it is it's a very difficult or I'm gonna use a punch or something like that. If you just take a set of regular old pliers that everyone pretty much has in their toolbox and you put pressure from one side of the pin and then on the back side, you can literally squeeze that right on. Now, you can see it barely popped down, but I just used some pliers and close that back in now that connecting link is done and it's ready to go as you spin anything that's coming this way is going to keep it on if you say lube your chain backwards there's potential it could pop your connecting link off so be be careful um haven't seen it much but i have seen those go missing for i don't know what reason but all of a sudden you don't have a connecting link on there and you're freaking out so um, now I'll show you the rivet link process. Just don't use a punch or anything like that. Just a small squeeze. Like so. Removes that. Now, your harder process is going to be actually taking this link off. And if you try to use a set of pliers to pull it off, it's not going to really work. So... I like to um, use an actual tool that's going to press these pieces out. On clip style links, there's not really any way you can get like pressure from both sides unless you use a chain tool. You can use a punch. What you're trying to do is get that thickness just pushed in between the two links. Now, I just do a slight tap on both sides and eventually the thing's going to pop off. Now, if you have a sharp punch, most likely it's gonna damage your X-ring. So hopefully, if you're doing this, you um, have some more X-rings. Careful not to damage, or you can take a punch and round it so you're not putting such a sharp edge in there. But eventually it'll come off. Like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the rivet connecting link process. It's the same with the um, 
the O-rings and the X-ring, sorry, not the O-rings. We're gonna slide an X-ring on, a fresh X-ring, because this is a whole new kit that most chains you have to buy uh, after. You get the connecting clip link with most chains, you have to buy the rivet link separate. Well, if you're buying some of the lower grade model ones. So I slid it into the chain. I've got a little bit of lube here. We can add a little bit more. Slide the O-ring, X-ring on. Now again, it's gonna be exactly the same as that rivet link. And I'm just pushing it on to where it kind of stays with the grease. This is kind of a tricky process. You can use that same process where you have like a nut where you squeeze it. Or if you're good with your chain tool, which I'm decent at, what you want to do is, this is the tool sold by Honda. It's actually overpriced and really expensive. Um, I got it back in the day, but those two pieces here, these indents are gonna sit on the actual pin on the back side. And then this side is gonna push this whole piece together. Now you have something, if, you have, if you're gonna use a rivet link um, tool, you have something of the sort. Hopefully you bought a Motion Pro tool because those are pretty user friendly. You can see how I've, it's, it's pushed together. Now I'm gonna use my ratchet and just slowly push that um, other side of the connecting link on. Now this isn't a like uh, a bunch of torque being put on here. You wanna basically go until it stops. If you go any farther than that, you're basically just smashing the X-ring and creating a stiff link. So you can see I've got the spacing real nice and it I pushed it together, it stopped, comes back a little bit naturally. Now you have, it's all together. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push a pin with that same tool into these holes and it's gonna open them up. And then this connecting, or the part of the outside link, is not gonna be able to come off that way. So I just used, I'm just connecting this tool together and this part of, as my finger's touching, is gonna touch the back side of that pin and the pin and the actual tool itself is gonna open that area of the pin so this connecting style link won't move off. And all we're doing is we're opening that up so it can um, essentially all stay together. Now the, the process I use is just like a, I, I run it up and then I just do a one, two, three, and then I remove it and I just take a look at it. And if you if you pay attention here, you can see that that's now changed. It's a little bit silver and it means that the tools run in there and kind of opened that circle up. Just like these, these pins are mashed, this one just gets opened. And that way that, um, the outside of the link can never come off. So this is always a guess, uh, guessing game on how far you're supposed to open it. I usually do a one, two, three, and I go back or I do a one, two, three on both of them. So I'm essentially like running a few threads in there. And then I just do like, I just kind of feel it. Um, and it feels pretty tight. Like it's, it's about maxed out. And then I'll run it to the other one. The thing is, is if you go too far with this system, you can actually open that little ring to the point where it, it breaks. And then you have to get a new link that you spent money on and that's no fun so if you look here you've got a little bit of wear around and that's where the tool is and then we know that ring is opened so it's it's essentially bent all outward and then now our our connecting link is never going to come off this is one continuous chain that you'd have to use a chain tool to break so you've got the chain now all connected and now we're going to go through um, chain adjustment.